Grandfather, you made us interested to know what happened to Pani Qurayda Jewish after they break the promise with the Prophet. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Be upon him. They didn't even break the promise, but they turned on him in the past situation. Yes. They revealed the Muslims back to Al Ahzab with their big army. And the Muslims were nearby this fall without a backup. They even didn't stop on that. But they started somewhere operations against Muslims. A man from them climbed down the castle where the Muslims women were and some drew me around. And in that time, the Muslims were busy in the war. It was a very bad day for Muslims. The army got very tired and it was very hard for them. Are you Allah enemy? Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. While the battle is going on, a man from Bani Qurayda was roaming around the Muslim woman in the castle, attacking them. One of the women was Sufiya bint Abdul Muttalib, the aunt of the Prophet peace be upon him. Take it, you Allah's enemy! Ah. Because of that, grandfather, the Muslims' bad feelings were increased against Jewish. Yes, Osama. When Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went to Um Salama's house at noon to have a bath, Jibreel came to him and said, Did you put the weapon down? The angels did not put their weapon, and they are asking for the people, so get up. Muhammad, with your people, to Pani Gorida. I will pee in front of you, convulsed their castles, and threw fear in their hearts. And what did the Prophet, peace be upon him, answer the grandfather? The Prophet, peace be upon him, hurried up, announcing the order to the Muslims to hurry up to Bani Qurayda, and said, I am ordering you not to pray al Asr until you get Bani Qurayda. Did they pray al Asr on the way, Grandfather? There were two different understandings of the Prophet says. Some said we have to pray, and the other said no harm if we wouldn't pray. <laughs> and who was right, Grandfather? The Prophet, peace be upon him, did not punish any of them. And when the Jewish of Bani Qurayda came to know that Al Ahzab were defeated, they ran away into their castles and closed the doors on themselves. Why did the Jewish went to their castles and didn't fight the Muslims? Aren't they strong? This is the habit of the Jewish hand. They do not fight unless they were in castles, villages, behind strong walls, as Allah says. And that shows us how coward people they are. 
And what did the Muslims do when they reached Bani Quraydah castle? They blocked him hardly. Their hearts full of fear. And with the sage were too tied. Their leader Kaab bin Asad gathered and said, Hey you Jewish people. Hey people, the leader of Bani Quraydah is speaking to you. You see what a bad situation we are in. So, I offer you three choices. Take any one of it. What are they, Cap? Yes, what is it? What is it? What is it? We follow Muhammad and believe him. What? What did you say? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? What, what did, did you say? say? Are, Are you, you crazy? crazy? People of Joes, listen to me. He's obviously the messenger of God and the one you find in your book. Your blood and money and your woman will be saved by him. I don't believe what I hear, Cap. I don't believe what I hear, you Jewish. So, nothing left except killing our children and women, then going out to Muhammad and his companions. Do you hear that? If we defeated, our children and women will be killed. But if we went to them and said, we will find the children and women waiting for us. How can we kill our people? How can we kill our children with our hands? Tonight is Saturday night, so we attack them. The Jewish tried to retrieve the Prophet peace be upon him, but he refused, except to surrender without any conditions. And when he saw that they have to do that, they tried to contact with some of their confederates from Muslims and they sent for Abu Lubaba bin Abdul Mandir to counsel him. Abu Lubaba, do you think that we follow Muhammad's rules? Yes, I do. Huh? Abu Lubaba realized that he betrayed Allah and his messengers. So he went fugitive here and there until he came to the mosque and tied himself to the perch of the mosque and swore not to be untied until Allah forgive him. What do you mean, grandfather of that? And what the conditions of the real forgiveness, grandfather? The people of knowledge, my son, mentioned many conditions. First, loyalty. No real penitence without loyalty to Allah. And their guide is Allah says. Second, the regret. Who didn't regret of what he did means he is satisfied with that. And their guide for that, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says the regret is penitence. Third, to take of doing bad things and determine not to go back to it. And their guide for that, Allah says. Fourth, returning the debts for their honors.
What else, grandfather? Did Allah accept Abu Lababa penitence? Who regret and return to Allah confessing his fault, finds Allah most forgiveness, most merciful. Allah says, What was the Prophet's decision, Grandfather? Did he attack the castle of Bani Qurayda? The Muslims decided to attack the castles. Huh? What? Attacking the castles? It's a disaster! Yes! We got to find a way! The situation became very difficult. We will tell Muhammad that we are going to follow Sa'ad bin Mu'adh's policy. He is the master of al aws and our Ali. You are right. Let's send someone to tell Muhammad. The Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered to arrest their men. The soldiers captured them and handcuffed them, and they isolated the women and children away from the men. And for the castle, the soldiers restricted it, and then they brought Sa'ad bin Mu'adh from the tent which he was nursed in, riding a donkey. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said to sad people, Stand up for your master and get him down. Grandfather, is it allowed for us to stand up for the coming as we do with our teachers in the start of the class? This is a non-Islamic habit. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, forbid it in his say, who loved to be assimilated by the people, will be seated in hell. But why did the companions, may Allah bless them, stand up for Sa'd bin Mu'adh, may Allah bless him? Don't you know that he was wounded, and he was brought mounted on a donkey? And the Prophet, peace be upon him, explained that when he said, get him down. God bless you, Grandfather. You explained what was unknown. But what Sa'ad did? When his people get him down, they preach him saying, amend your adherence. They followed you. Sa'ad May Allah bless him, said, I will judge them. They said, Yes. Sa'ad said, And the Muslims too. They said, Yes. Sa'ad said, It's time for Sa'ad not to be at Manshir. So I judged the men to be killed, and the women to be captivated, and the money to be distributed. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, You judge them with Allah's judgment above seven skies. This talk shows us the highness of Allah and his knowledge of his creation. You are right. And this religion is the correct one which we all agreed on it. And did the Prophet, peace be upon him, agree with Sa'ad's judgment? Yes. Trenches were trenched in the town market for the execution, and the fighters from the Jewish were dragged to pay the price of their treasury. And what the leader of Bani Anudair did? Hayyai bin Akhtab. The leader of Bani and Nadir was the head of badness. 
He is the one who pushed Bani Kuraida to break their promise. But Ka'ab bin Sa'ad stipulated him to enter the castle if he defeat Al Ahzab. So he was brought to have his payment. When he saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, I didn't converge myself in your enmity. And then he said to Bani Quraida, People of Bani Quraida, I am the leader of Bani Nadir, as you know. I believe in God, Judge. And it's hero written by Allah on the Jewish people. After what he said, one of the soldiers dragged him and beheaded him. The Jewish attitude from Islam didn't change during the years. Their attitude yesterday is the same today. They killed our brothers and sons in Palestine. We have from Allah to help us kick them out from the Muslim's land as the Prophet, peace be upon him, regarding their treasury. What happened with Sa'ad bin Mu'adh, grandfather? After his judgment on Bani Quraida, the Prophet, peace be upon him, stand him a tent in the mosque so he can visit him. But his wounds didn't cure. What do you mean by that, Grandfather? It was infected after healing, and so he died. The Muslims were very sad for the death of Sa'ad bin Mu'adh. May Allah bless him. There are many sayings in the Quran about this relevant to keep the consideration in front of the Muslims' eyes. There are many lessons in this story, Grandfather. That's right. And the most important is the respect between the Muslims and his brother and understanding him. Moreover, is that the Jewish can't keep a promise. And now, let's go to sleep, my sons. <laughs>